Hello, my name is Matthew Harrison and I'm a farming system scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. Uh, in, in this webinar we'll look at the Crop Livestock Enhancement Model, which is essentially a, a mixed farming system simulation model that allows for feed, resources, economics and integration of, of crops and, and livestock within the one simulation. So it's a, it's a blend of a grazing simulation within the crop uh, existing modules of AFSIM Next Generation. So what I have open here is the CLEM example from the default AFSIM Next Generation simulations and to get that open, to get that uh, initially open you go to the home screen, you click on open an example, uh, you navigate to your C drive, to program files, to your AFSIM Next Generation folder, to examples, to CLEM, and then open this CLEM example grazing here. So every time you install, uh, every time you open AppSim Next Generation, you should hit upgrade. And in there, you'll find terms and conditions. Uh, once you've read the terms and conditions, it'll come up with the most recent bug fixes and any maintenance made to the model between the time of you've got it open now and, and the time you've previously closed the model. And I recommend you do that every time you open the model. I'm not going to do it in this context because it might take a bit too long. So we'll just go to Clem example grazing there. We have the, in much the same way as all AppSim Next Generations are structured, the Next, Sim, Next, Next Generation simulations are structured. We have a tree-like structure, so we have the simulations up the top, so that's a parent node, and then we have a number of child nodes underneath that. So we have a data store, and that shows all the data in the simulation. That's in there because I've already run a simulation. When you first open up one, that that's those data may not be in there. We have a grazing example, and these memos are very important, and I encourage you to read that. So in this simulation, we've got grazing of, it's just quite a simple simulation. We have 10 ruminants on a native pasture and feeding of hay. Now we have the grazing node, and within the grazing node, we have the, the actual the simulation details, which are specified by these components here, and then the crop livestock enhancement parts in here and we'll go through each of these in in a stepwise fashion. So I encourage you to have a read of this but basically what we have is uh, with we have native pasture and when when the feed demand exceeds the supply the feed gap is filled with purchased hay. So I'd encourage you to read over those details and then when ac when excess animals read a cert reach a certain age they're removed or sold from the simulation. Uh, breeding is assumed to be done by artificial insemination, but you can change that as well. So we have a clock, and that specifies the simulation duration. In this case, it's going to go from the start of 1970 to 1993. We have a summary file, which is always good to look at when you've run your simulation. When you first open it up, you won't have details in here. That These details are in here because I've already run a simulation, uh, but I'd encourage you to look at that, look at uh, the simulation log after you've run the simulation and you can you can hit this here and it goes to specific areas so it'll give you for example warnings and warnings will allow the simulation to run errors will stop the simulation and the error will be shown down here in this space here we have random numbers uh, this is essentially a, a, a seed generation number uh, if you want to use the clock which I, which I'd probably encourage you specify this value of zero but of course you can change that value if you right click on this on any of the components, if you right click on this component here, uh, and this goes for all apps in next generations, you'll see this add model uh, option here. And if you just go to that, it'll bring up a number of different other options for within the next apps in next generation uh, module structure. So you can add any of these components from agroforestry, agroforestry, but particularly in the in the context of this simulation, you might want to look at the CLEM example. So we have CLEM folder. We have different options for reporting and you can drag and drop these, any of these on the simulation. So you simply drag it and then drop it on the simulation in the, in the appropriate spot. So in this case, we have CLEM, we have each of the options here uh, and these options here would go in the reporting folder within your CLEM module. So you just drag it over there and then drop it on the appropriate spot. You also have other a number of different other options. So we have graphing options, we have other components from other module, module structures and some of these, a lot of these won't work within the context of the CLEM simulation so I encourage you to keep it simple in the first case. These reporting options are quite useful and they will work in the context of this 
of the Clem simulation. So we just if we just click back here, it'll go off that grazing thing. Uh, if we go down to Clem, now the way Clem's organised is it has a, a basic summary at the top level of the parent node of all the child nodes within it. So it's got, it's saying, because I've already ran this simulation, it's saying the simulation was successfully run at that date on that time, but it's giving us a warning. Uh, and you can go into the details here. We have a, a more detailed summary here, and we have, this is where you actually have the option to change the input. So, for example, a farm mu multiplier to supply and receive from market, which is set from one, you could set that to any other value. A climate index region, uh, end of month uh, parameters, for example. And you can do this for any of these uh, options within this CLEM component as well as other options and I'll go through some of them examples in a second. Now one thing you might like to note if you open up this example from the example folder as I've done your apps in fighter probably won't be pointing to that so you need to be able to because it's green it's saying it's fine I can see that file but if it's red it's going to say well I can't find that file and it'll give you an error down here. So the way you change that as I said before this is the summary and so you often think, oh, well, I'll click in there and try to change things, but you can't. So the way you change things is in here, in this properties node. So we've got the crop file name, and that's showing the directory. So it's coming out of the program files, the appsim folder, the examples folder, the clem subfolder, and then the file forage uh, node. So to get that, we just hit this button over here, and it'll just bring up. Uh, so I've navigated to this directory, and then there's the component there. So I just select that there and hit OK. So now we just go back here and each of these are organised into, again, in the same way. So we have a parent folder and then we have a number of child nodes underneath that. So we have the summary for the resources. And then we have this, in each of these components we have previous versions. So that's showing bug fixtures in, in previous versions. And you might like to note the version that you use for any simulation because as it changes over time, the, your simulations will also change over time. Uh, the, some of the numbers that come out of your simulations will change, so that's useful to keep track of. So in the resources, and you can change and delete any of these, for example, I'm not particularly interested in finances, so I'm not going to pay too much attention to that. We have land area, we have ruminants or livestock, we, has our, we have our grazing food store and our animals food store. So this is pasture-based feed and this is external feed. So if we go to land and click on the top level, it's saying it's reported in hectares, the land area is 250 hectares, and the land, it, this, this, this is just essentially an identifier here, and you can change that number by clicking on properties, or actually, sorry, the top level of versions. Um, where did I change it? It's in one of these components. I can't actually find it now. You go to properties, and it's in here. So it's in the, it's in the child level. So if you go to paddock, it's essentially a land type ID, and you can change that number by changing it there. You can also change the land area and these other parameters. If we go back here, we have finances, and this is giving you a, an overall summary. So we've got 100,000 in the budget. We have an interest rate, and 2% is paid. The resource is is me the resource is measured in saying not specified. So when it's red, that means it's an error, and we have to point to where that actual file folder is. So I mean, as I said before, in a in a context that I was interested in economics or finances, I would go into these details, but I won't go into it into the details in this webinar. So if we go back to ruminants, we can see the the way the herd is structured is that we have Bos indicus, which is a generic cattle bead, particularly in northern Australia. Uh, we have the her the initial cohort, the initial herd structure. So we have female weaners, we have male weaners, we have three males age three to four, and males age various ages. So we, we can see their ages here and their nominal weights at the start of the simulation, as well as other details. And you can scroll through these here. So we're saying, for example, for the weaners, which are that class of animal aged less than 12 months, we can buy and sell them. Whereas for females aged one to three, we're only buying them. And if you want to change those parameters, you can go in here, and we have all of these parameters down here. So you can you can look at these. So there's detailed growth parameters as well, and so that's useful for if you have a, a if you have real data from a grazing simulation, you want to parameterize animal growth, for example. So I encourage you to have a look at those in your own time.
grazing food store, uh, we have we can specify the nitro nitrogen content of the pasture, the DMD or the dry matter digestibility, as well as the pasture detachment rate. So that's useful for indicating uh, litter and senescence, for example. And then we have the animal food store, so we're specifying the nitrogen content of the of the hay here, uh, as well as any purchasing details. So we come down here to the the activities node, and we're specifying here the details of the native pasture and where they're coming from. So a key difference here between AppSim Next Generation and other modules of AppSim, AppSim, in, in particular most cropping modules in AppSim, generally simulate crop growth within the AppSim simulation. In Clem, you need to specify where the, you, you need to run uh, a pasture growth in an alternative simulation save that to a file, which might be named file forage, and then point Clem to that file. So essentially, in this, in this example at least, we don't have grass growing. So you have to have run that simulation somewhere elsewhere, and that might be uh, uh, okay for a long-term uh, simulation at a, uh, at a rangeland site, for example, or even an intensive pasture site. If you're, doing it, if you're looking at long-term typical uh, pasture growth rate trends, I think that's appropriate. And you can, and then you can get uh, that file and nominate where that is from the AppSim Next Generation structure here. So you nominate those details in here, you nominate the proportion of the product kept, and you can also include trees in the simulations, and we'll talk about that in a different webinar. So in this case it's zero. Then you have your herd management details, so this is very important for saying growing your ruminants, you're mustering them, what they're grazing, what you're feeding them, what the breeding details are, when you're weaning them, so when you're taking the young away from the old, from the adults, from their mothers, and how you manage numbers, as well as buying and selling. And we have a summarised summarise herd node here, as well as a report herd node here. So you can't actually do anything with, with these components, but they're very useful when you come to reporting, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now we have reports. So I've just left these in here from the... Uh, default example. So one of the probably one of the most useful things of all is this calendar-like output. So report activities performed. So it's say, it's come along with a green tick here. It's saying on this date, it's saying native pasture to graze feed store. Yes, it's it's going to be conducted. If it's grayed out, it means it's it can occur if it's appropriate. But if it's grayed out, that means it hasn't actually occurred in the simulation. And if we go over here. Now, we have these data here because I've already run a simulation. We've got the individual dates as well as all the management details and breeding and weaning and buying and selling, for example, that occur on any given day in the simulation. So, for example, the 31st of the 1st, 1970, we're saying na native pasture on farm. There's nothing to do for the simulation. This second one here, we're saying convert that native pasture to the grazed food store. So that's a, a cutting and storing thing. That's saying that's been successful mustering to pasture, and that was why it was grayed out on the previous one, it's saying it's not needed, and so on and so forth. So I think that's very useful. Then we have report for resource balances, and then in here you can put in a number of different uh, reporting variables, and then once you've run the simulation, you should be able to see these variables come up here, as well as the magnitude of the number, and we can plot these numbers, and I'll get to that shortly. And so we have a, a number of different ledgers here, and I'll let you go through them at your leisure. Probably one of the most important things is the summary. And now this is where you can put in any variable that you like. And you might say, well, how do I actually know what the name of the variable is? Well, you just look back at the structure of AppSim. So what it's saying here is, for this variable, I'm going to get the number of lactating animals, which I've added, it wasn't in the example. I'm going to get the number of lactating animals from the activities node. So it's going to come from here. Then it's going to come from my summarised herd node and then it's going to come from these particular parameters. So to get that, and to give you an example, we can just copy a previous one. We just paste it there. And every time you hit the full stop, it's called IntelliSense. So it'll come up with a number of different options. And you can read through the descriptions here and pick a number of different variables. So we can have native pasture on farm. We can have management details. We can have herd reporting. And we, have, we also have more detailed uh, implicit model structures here that you can output as well. 
So if we click, double click on summarize herd, we hit full stop again, we get more options that come up. So again, we go to report details. Hit full stop again. Uh, now, a lot of the variables are reported here. So just for an example, uh, we might want the Yeah, so all of these variables are reported above. So we might just, for example, say we want average intake. And this is the AppSim name of the AppSim variable. It's obviously a bit clunky to report in the when you're selecting it in the reporting variable. So you you nominate a variable name or a pseudo name for which you want to uh, plot that in the output file. So we can just say as. Uh, and then we might say average intake. It doesn't really matter what name, just as long as you know what it is. Down here we have the reporting frequency, and so this is coming from the summarize herd component, and it's saying every time, every day, a report item is generated, uh, output these variables. And so you can change that as well. In this case, I don't think there's any other options, but in other cases, you will have options. Yeah, so it's only got one option there. Double click on that. So if you wanted outputs only yearly you can also change this as well so it that and that might be more appropriate you might not want to look at daily outputs so once we've done all that we get down to the bottom we have graphs uh, and we have income and expenses animal numbers and we'll look at those shortly so to run a simulation you just right click on the top level go to run apps him and it's saying it took about two and a half seconds to run and it ran uh, successfully as you can see it's complete now we click on our graphs and here we have income and expenses and you might think well that's not very informative but it, if you lo actually look at it it's saying well we've got much greater income than expenses but then you say well actually that's probably not the case because we've got e expenses plotted uh, on a different axis so to look at the individual data you go down to this sub component level now You've got to uh, look carefully at where this data has come from if you want to change the variables. So we have uh, the data sources come from the finances ledger. And if you, if you click these options here, you can get a number of different data sources. So if you look at the finances ledger, wherever it is, it's come from in there. So we're saying report finances. Here is our finances data. So we have gain, losses, resources, for example. So each of the components in this in this graph has come from the finances ledger and you can look at each of the data in here and you might want to plot different examples so uh, if we just go back to this example here uh, we want to look at uh, uh, profit loss so one thing here is that it's it seems to be on a different it's sa it seems to be on the same axis but it's much smaller than the income so we might say on right and we can then see that our loss is ranges between zero and negative a thousand but just be careful when you're comparing these so the green bars are com uh, plotted on the r on the left axis and the orange bars are plotted on the right if we go expenses associated with hay purchases uh, you can obviously change the plotting details in here um, and we could also choose to plot that on the right axis and you can see then that it's expenses associated with hay are relatively small compared with income so 15,000 here compared with negative 100 to negative 300 and so you can manipulate those graphs by changing these different filters here uh, one graph I've added here as I've said well how can I actually get age numbers so I went back here and I copied this one here and I dumped it on graphs there to add an additional uh, graph and then I've gone back to age group uh, now I've changed my data source to herd summary uh, I've got X, I've got the clock on the X axis now I wanted the age group and obviously you've got all those variables that are associated with your herd summary and we looked at those before so you could say well I want to look at average weight I want to look at average weight gain and so that's different so in this case it's plotting the green variables we'll just go back to average weight uh, so we have age group so I should put that back to age group and we have average weight in the green so age Average weight is obviously compressed here because it's on the same axis. I'm just going to leave it down there because it's a bit harder to see. So 
as you can see that the simulation is working well. So what it's doing is an animal is getting born, it's going from about 50 kilos up to about 600, and then it's flatlining, and you can see the larger mature animals up here. This is obviously where an age group is getting sold off. Then more animals get born in the following year, and you can see differences in growth rates between years. And if you want to have a look at the details in individual simulation, you can actually, you know, you might want to go back here and change the clock, run it for a shorter time, or you might want to change the reporting, uh, the reporting frequency back in here, so this variable here. So that's about all I wanted to say for today. Thanks for watching this webinar, and I'll see you next time.